warm welcome to this time and place and people of worship on this third Sunday after Pentecost. Our worship continues with the confession and forgiveness found in the bulletins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin and our brokenness to the other. Reconciling God, we confess we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. We can live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn when morning fills the skies. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of strength and courage, in Christ you set us free from sin and death and call us to the risk of faith and service. Give us grace to follow Jesus who gave himself for others that by our service we may find the life Jesus came to bring. Amen.
I'm Nora Young, and this is the first reading from Jeremiah chapter 20. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention the Lord, or speak any more in the name of the Lord, then within me there is something like a burning fire to shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps Jeremiah can be enticed and we can prevail against him, and we can take our revenge on him. The Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteousness, you see the heart and mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For the Lord has delivered the life of the needy hands of evildoers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'm Neil Young. And I'm Carrie Young. And this is a reading from the 69th Psalm. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Hi, my name is Henry Young, and the second reading is from Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 11. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by, by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with Christ in a, death, in a death like his, we'll certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we, we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to, to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for this morning is taken from the 10th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 24th verse. Jesus said, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebul. 
how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a son against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me, is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. And Jesus continues, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Our gospel for this morning is about a third of the way into Matthew's story of Jesus' life. Close to the end of the story, in the 27th chapter, we find this verse. And those who passed by Jesus derided him, wagging their heads. The people stood by, watching Jesus die a terrible cross, a terrible death on the cross. At the beginning of the story, Matthew tells us over and over and over that huge crowds of people followed Jesus as his fame spread throughout the countryside. Many followed him because of the blessings that they hoped to receive. It's interesting. It's interesting to pay close attention to watch the people in Matthew. If you have some extra time, I recommend reading the entire chapter and just pay attention to the people. I see myself in them. It's like holding a mirror in front of my face, and maybe the same is true for you. Early on, we get one picture of the people. Matthew says they were baptized, they sought Jesus, they pressed upon him, they were astonished and marveled at his teaching, they rejoiced, they hung on his every word. Matthew says all the people came to Jesus, all the people. But at the end of the story, the people, the same people, many of the same people, derided Jesus. They wag their heads with scorn as the one they followed with excitement and devotion was being tortured and was hung on a cross. And not only did they stand by, not only did they deride and scorn him, they actively participated, yelling out to Pilate, kill him, crucify him. 
quite a switch, quite an about face. Makes you wonder what's going on with these people. What's the deal here anyway? Makes you wonder about their character, their integrity. Today's gospel text is difficult. Jesus talks about setting sons against fathers, daughters against mothers. He says, whoever does not bear their own cross and come after me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not renounce all they have cannot be my disciple. They who find their lives will lose it. They who lose their life will find it. I'm thinking part of the people's 180 degree turn had to do with finally realizing what Jesus was talking about. They finally figured out what it meant to follow him. It dawned on them what bearing their own cross meant in real terms, in action, and not just talk. They counted up the cost of discipleship. And when they realized Jesus wasn't just talking about their getting stuff, but also about giving, about sacrifice, about commitment, about getting priorities in order, about caring about people who were struggling, who had less, about loving deeply, even loving their enemies about being willing to give their lives to follow God's way. When they were clear on all of that, they cried out, crucify him. And when they got their way, when the crucifixion actually happened, they stood by and watched. Jesus died. And then the horror of what they'd done set in. The tragedy of what they'd left undone hit home. And Matthew says the people ran home beating their breasts. They killed hope and love and forgiveness, and justice, and all that was good and beautiful on that day. Instead of saying no to the things that got in the way of loving other people, they said no to Jesus, to his way, to his call, and then they stood by and watched. What happened to them happens to us. What they did, we do. Maybe not always so clearly, not always on such a grand scale, but it happens. We do it just the same. There continue to be innocent victims in our world. We are well aware of the disparities in wealth and opportunity that exist in this country, in our world. We know our economic system is set up to favor some over others. Disparities in education, in housing, in healthcare, in employment bring their own form of crucifixion into people's lives every day. The people in Jesus' time stood by watching as crucifixions happened. It's important to ask ourselves do I stand by watching? Are there parallels in our time? If we're honest, we have to say, of course there are. We all know there are. We all know there are. The parallels have been laid bare again in the last few months as COVID-19 pandemic hit our shores. 
in terms of skin color, who in this country got hit the hardest? In terms of skin color, who continues to get hit the hardest? And why is that? The parallels have been laid bare again in the last three weeks when those of us who are white have been reminded yet again of what it's like to be a person of color living in this country. Crucifixions, lynchings, state-sponsored brutality, it's been going on for centuries. And it's still going on. And we know it's wrong. We know it's pure and simple evil. Jesus posed questions to the people who were following him. The questions are for us as well. Jesus asks you, and he asks me, when all is said and done, where does your loyalty lie? <clears throat> What's at the center of your life? What or who do you really trust? In your list of priorities, where does God's call fit? Who or what is running your life? Jesus' call is serious. It's a call many would prefer to ignore or forget or wish it would just go away. But here we are again on Sunday, June 21st, 2020, face to face with Jesus' call to follow in his way. We are face to face with our feelings, our fears, our guilt, our anger at Jesus' expectation. Maybe some will scoff when I say that Jesus' call is serious. Maybe some just don't care. Some might see Jesus' call to follow in his way as just one more burden in the life that already has more than enough burdens. It's easy to see only demand, only burden, only impossible expectation in Jesus' words. But that brings us right back to Jesus' question. Who's at the center of your life, God or you? It's true, I think, when my faith is centered on me, when I want to run the show, when I want to be the big kahuna, when I want to set the agenda and not follow God's agenda, when my main concern is my needs, my wants, then there's very little room for discipleship, for following Jesus' way. There's very little room for loving my neighbors, for taking risks, for joining in solidarity with those who are suffering, for working for justice, for examining my white privilege, for making racial equity a priority, for picking up my own cross. Those kinds of actions, that kind of love, expending energy in that way when we are turned in on ourselves only adds to the burdens we already are carrying, often all alone. Hear Jesus' words to you spoken a little later in Matthew, Matthew 11. Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When God is the focus of your trust, when you're following God's agenda, when you realize long before you were called to be faithful to God's way, long before that God was, God is, God always will be faithful to you. 
when you realize that, then Jesus' call to discipleship isn't quite as much of a burden. Believe it or not, it's actually a huge gift. It's remarkable and mysterious opportunity to live life to its fullest. Because God's faithfulness is steadfast. Because God's relentless love for us never tires. Because of all that, we are freed from our captivity to selfishness, to greed, to fear. We are free then to love, free to risk, free to enter deeply into what Jesus calls the beloved community. It is day 27 since George Floyd was murdered right in front of our eyes. People say white folks' attention span after tragedies like this is about 21 days. Can we imagine that on day 121, we are still deeply affected, still caring, still working to make things different? Can we imagine a world where no one is left out? Where all God's children actually act like everyone, no matter their skin color, no matter their culture, no matter what language they speak, is their sister and their brother. And they act like that because they know Everyone is their sister or brother. They know it deep in their heart. Imagine a world like that. Imagine a world like that and work with others to make it real. That's what Jesus was talking about.
unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Christ, our companion in the streets, in police stations, on curbsides, in hospital waiting rooms, in public health offices, in marches, in hallways of governments, you wait for us to open the door, to admit our faults, and to forgive. Give us courage to do the hard acts, to love mightily and give tenderly. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy Spirit, comfort us. Soften our touch, lend our voices, clarify our minds, and fire up our hearts for the work at hand. We ask for your guidance in action, word, and thought. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy mystery, you carry us when we are sorrowful broken down in deepest grief, and unable to go further. Give us rest. Give us a peace that is beyond our ability to find alone. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another, that differences might not overshadow our baptismal where racism is present in our lives and in our churches, make us aware and uncomfortable enough to change. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you have shaken the foundations of what we thought to be order. You have removed the blindfolds to our unjust acts and collusion. You have upended our sense of control and turned over our tables of normalcy. Help us to seek your will and turn to your light, to seek your word. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. We give thanks for the Supreme Court rulings this week, providing justice for LGBTQI siblings and DACA immigrants. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who are ill in mind, body, and spirit. Be with Matt as he faces a major medical challenge. Continue to hold Bjorn, Jim, David, John, Trisha, Audrey's father, Susan's parents, Jenny's father, Jean's friend living in isolation, in your healing and comforting care. Be with those waiting on tests those living with COVID, medical personnel serving with those with COVID, those grieving, those struggling with loneliness and isolation, those who live with addiction, those who are constrained by depression. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers, and for all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the living Christ be with you always, and also with you. And a warm welcome to all of you to this worship service and this community of faith. If you're visiting with us, we are delighted to have you worshiping with us. Uh, you may be from all over the world. We don't know, but we're so delighted to have you here. 
There is Zoom coffee hour after worship, and we're thankful to John Swensig Tellickson for being the host, and the information is in your bulletin. There's also many opportunities to continue to give and serve and volunteer, and those are in your um, those are listed in your bulletin um, to help locally, and especially in South and North Minneapolis. Want to say that Grace Sing is is um, gathering together after the worship as well on a Zoom, and they gather together to sing and then um, share what is happening in their lives and for prayer. And then I also want to invite you, those of you who have always been wanted to sing in the choir, the choir is rehearsing regularly, each one in their own home, um, offering their voice uh, singularly, and then Brian Neureiter, Grace member, is putting all those voices together. And so if you want to join that group, please contact Steve Self or Jill at the church office. And we are very grateful for um, the choir anthem that will be sung now after I am done here. And the title is Total Praise. And this is an anthem that was sung at both of George Floyd's memorial services. And so um, it's a beautiful piece. So we're thankful to the choir for their singing.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give you thanks that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Mother in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive a blessing. God bless you and keep you. God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>